Sharpness is a huge part of getting good results with a hand plane. Your sharpening routine should be simple and so convenient that you never hesitate to stop and make a quick touch up on your blade rather than struggling until you have to do a major overhaul every time you stop to sharpen. Um, in this video, I'm going to show my sharpening routine, which works for me in a very confined space here in my garage. So here's how I keep my hand planes working well. It's a good idea to stop and hone your plane iron when you notice pushing the plane takes more effort than it did a minute ago. I have my stones, spray bottle, and other sharpening stuff on a plywood tray with a rim and a cleat. I stow it on a countertop off to the side, and that cleat under the front edge uh, can be gripped by the vise when I remember to tighten it. When you separate the chip breaker from the blade, be sure to pull it backwards away from the blade's edge before you pivot it away for ease of handling. Always treat the sharp edge with respect and like the precision surface it really is. I use an inexpensive side clamping honing guide like the one Highland sells. Rather than measure the projection, I've made myself a simple stop from small cutoffs. It's more important to be consistent than to sharpen at a specific angle, and this easy jig makes that happen automatically. Just a little tweak with the screwdriver makes sure the honing guide won't slip. It <laughs> works better if you fasten it. Now I'm feeling for a burr. When you feel a burr across the full width of the iron, you're ready to move up to the polishing stones. This is a 4000 grit water stone. You could do without this stone and just have 1200 and 6000 stones. But I find that this intermediate polishing stone means I take fewer strokes on the 8000 stone. You might also notice that I'm not raising a paste with a Nagura stone before I start. When I use a honing jig, I find that even if the blade skips or skates a little before the stone starts cutting, it doesn't change the angle and doesn't matter. This might be different for freehand honing. Now for 8000 grit. This stone leaves a true mirror polish. Notice that it soaks up the water I've spritzed on and needs a little replenishment. You might notice I shift the pressure from corner to corner every so often. I'm making the iron very, very subtly curved. This might be the subject of another video. We cover it in detail in Highland's hand plane class. There's that mirror surface we're talking about. With work done on the bevel, it's time to remove the burr from the back of the blade. As you work up through the grits, the burr becomes smaller and smaller. You may or may not feel it after your finest grit, but it's there. Rest the back of the blade on the stone, and with the edge of the blade off the stone, press down firmly while drawing the blade's edge onto the stone. Then polish the back of the blade for a dozen or so strokes. You may have heard of what some people call the ruler trick, but that's a fine point to discuss another time.
Uh huh. I forgot to have a shop rag handy to clean up. Usually that'll be right here, like this. Fortunately, fine shavings make fine wipers. Since I use water stones, I always need to remember to wipe some oil on the freshly sharpened iron to prevent rust. This little oil swab from Highland is filled with camellia oil, but any rust protector will do the trick. Just be sure to do something. When reassembling the chip breaker and blade, get the chip breaker's edge very close to the edge of the blade. For planes that do fine work like this smoothing plane or a joiner, the chip breaker should be within half a millimeter of the blade's edge. For a jack plane or a scrub plane, it doesn't need to be so close. When reinstalling the blade, it's a lot easier to hold the top face of the frog horizontal so the blade doesn't fall through the plane's mouth. Notice how I use the lateral adjuster to confirm both adjusters are fully engaged in their slots. After checking that the blade is parallel to the sole by eye, I confirm this by stroking a thin chip of wood across the blade at left, center, and right to be sure the blade is cutting parallel. Visual checks on this can be inaccurate, and with the wood chip, you get very precise feedback on how well the plane is adjusted. Finally, some oil on the sole will protect from rust and make the work easier. Students at Highland often ask whether the oil will stain the wood or interfere with glue or finish. The short answer is no. And that's all there is to keeping your plane iron sharp. Highland Woodworking has all the sharpening gear you need and the know-how to help you use it. See our website or give us a call to learn more.